Praise the Lord. Amen. <coughs> welcome everybody to the Sunday morning worship service. I want to welcome those also who have joined us online. And as usual, as we go right before we go before the Lord in prayer, won't you read a psalm? Psalm 111. Psalm 111. And it's just short enough for me to read the whole thing. Listen to the word of, of the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, that means in the congregation. A lot of people want to separate themselves. You know, uh, I know a lot of people cannot be here because of illnesses and uh, other complications, <coughs> but in past years, I've noticed that people make a uh, think that just sitting at home and or sitting out in the garden and praying is enough. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great. You like going online and raiding people and raiding businesses? How about raiding the Lord Amen. and saying that His works are great? The works Amen. of the Lord are great. Saw out, saw out of all them that have pleasure therein. Yes. Yes. His work is honorable, honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endureth forever. He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shown his people the work, the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Good thing we don't have to work for him, huh? Amen. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to start being smart? This goes before your uh, college application. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. A good understanding of all day that do his commandments, his praise, and do it. Forever. Let us stand right now. You're able to join us as we go before the Lord. We praise you, dear Lord. The Lord is the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, dear Lord. We thank 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 you, dear Lord. We recognize that you are the one true living God. Your words are free. We just love your people. We praise you right now. We praise you right now, dear Lord. In this worship service, we touch those who may want to hear your word and music. Jesus wants to be your Lord. Be Lord. Amen. Amen. We will continue to worship by singing unto the Lord. And Brother Glover is going to lead us in those songs. Come on. Amen. Amen. Church page 208. Nothing but the love. 208.
Joshua Caleb. So let me take this out. A happy birthday. I want to wish Joshua and Caleb a happy birthday. I also want to welcome my cousin. I'm glad you're here. And I already can tell you have a real nice spirit about him. You know, you can be a piece of eyes. Tell so that someone was raised the right way. So, uh, for the worship service tonight. Worship service is tonight at 6.30. And we're going to go, and of course you should know the time, 6.30 to 7.30 and, uh, and, and things. And so do I have any other announcements, anybody? The July 2nd? 16. 16. Also, July 16th, we will be having a fellowship here from 5, from five to 8. From five to eight, we're gonna have a fellowship. So, so bring all your kids, bring everybody, and invite people out to that. So we just gonna have a fun time as a church, okay? We're gonna have a fun time, and so uh, it, 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 I hope that's it, right? That's it. So at this time, we're gonna go ahead and receive the Sunday morning tithe and offerings, and remember all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give any offering as unto the Lord. And so, uh, so let's uh, give and support the ministry, the work of God, according to the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Brother Philip, you don't mind asking God's blessing on this office. Lord, we thank you for this time and opportunity to give back to you, Lord, because you give it to us so much, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, for your blessings upon the gift and the giver. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a quiet Yes.
chapter 12, verse 25, 26. Hmm. I want to take up this scripture where Jesus is speaking here. Now listen to the greatest teacher of all. He said, and this is out of your KJV, pretty sure that other versions of the Bible say similar. The Bible says, and which of you with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit. If ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Let's read that again for clarity and emphasis. And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest. Isn't that powerful? Just that scripture coming out, God talking to us. And with the help of the Lord, we want to minister on a message entitled, When Man is Out of Control. Man meaning mankind. When Man is Out of Control is the title. And listen, y'all, God is not into wasting people's time. You don't have to be afraid that the Lord is not going to speak to you. The Lord is going to speak to all of us this morning, okay? Because He cares about your time, and He does not, uh, and He knows you can't get this time back. So why do you you? He's going to deal with this. All of us here and online. So let's come with open heart. Blame all the mistakes on me. My English is not perfect. But let me tell you something. The Lord does not mess up languages, and He knows the language of your heart. God knows all about us, right? Inside and out know more about us than what we know. And so that being said, let us pray. I would like to ask um, Brother Lance, sir, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this worship service. Father God, we thank you for being in your presence and for giving us this day. The Lord, we ask that you open our hearts that we have receptive hearts, receptive minds. The Lord, that we, our minds not wonder, and our vision and search for you does not waver. In Christ's name, we pray that your words are planted on the tablets of our hearts and that we gather to hear your word, to hear your teachings, and to do them as we hear them. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see what God does this morning. I don't have a whole bunch of lines. But I've uh, written down. But we want to dive right into it. Let's check it out without a doubt. When man is out of control. Not too long ago, <laughs> wife was checking me out. And she began to rub my skin. She was rubbing my skin. She was like, she looked at me, she said, oh, like that. A little bit of sadness, but she began to rub my skin. Are you rubbing it now? She noticed how thin my skin is becoming. You know, with age, that happens. And there's a difference, right, Sister Rano, between 49 and 43. You in your late 40s is one way. In your early 40s, it's another way. And I feel like, uh, really in your 40s, you're kind of getting introduced. You're at the introductory course to old age. You're introduced to it. You're not really introduced to it yet in your 30s. Now yet, now yet, you still can get out, you can do some things. 
certain marks are not on you yet, but uh, when you start getting in your 40s, you, you, notice, you notice some things that become kind of permanent. And, uh, and they don't go away. It's something that's like, oh my goodness, man, I never lived with this before, but now it's something that I'm living with. But the, the, uh, the elast what you call it, elasticity in the skin is just different from the late 40s and the early 40s. And I was like, whoa, man. And then I said, I start feeling all over, you know, you start getting this self-preservation thing going. I start feeling all over myself. I said, it's all over me. And there's one thing you can't stop, brothers and sisters. You and I are not in control of, we are not in control of our old age. Right. Old age is what it is. Matter of fact, it is the curse of Adam that causes us to get old. God did not intend for us to get old. I seriously doubt that when we see God, he's going to look like some frail old man that's been around for eons. The Lord is going to look young, y'all. God is going to look young. Okay? The Holy Spirit looks young. Guess who else look young? All the saints that's gone on look young too. Moses yeah. look young. Nobody, it, there are no old people in heaven. When I say old people, I'm talking about people looking old. Amen? Yeah. All this is just a curse of the earth. Why do we get old? Again, we get old because we transgress God's commandment. In the Garden of Eden, in old age has gone on. I'm trying to talk about this because of this. There are some things you just cannot control, brothers and sisters. You cannot control it. And no man, the Bible says, can retain his spirit. You can't retain your spirit. When it's time for you to die, there is nothing you can do about it. You are, and, and I, we are out of here. When our time comes, you cannot stop it. You cannot say, God, I need more time. I need to spend one more day with my mom. I need to spend one more day with my child. I need to spend one more day. The days are over, brothers and sisters. You cannot retain your spirit. You cannot ret can, uh, uh, retain your soul. And let me tell you something, really, uh, you can't even determine the day that you're going to die. You can't, you can't say, today I'm going to die. You can't just die right now. None of us can sit here and just uh, think ourselves into death. You can try it all day long. You might, you know, you could probably do some things to yourself, make them commit suicide, but you can't take a thought and go, I'm done, I'm out. And just uh, all of a sudden, your spirit just steps out of your body. All right. Doesn't work that way, right? right? There are people who have tried to die. They try to, they're like, man, God, just take me, just take me. And they still wake up the next day because the Lord, it was not, the Lord was not ready for them. So to, 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 uh, to leave, in, in other words, they were not in control. You're not in control of life. You're not in control of death with just a thought. We're, there's some things that we're just not in control of. We're not in control of the rain. We're not in control of the light. We're not in control of a lot of things. There's some things that, uh, that we just cannot do on our own, right? And let me tell you something this morning. Another thing that people try to do on their own, that is to be saved. They try to get right with God on their own. It is impossible, brothers and sisters, for us to get right with God on our own. Unless the Lord calls you, unless Jesus, or God the Father, draws you by the Spirit of Jesus, you can't even come to God. It's a blessing when you get convicted. It's a blessing when the Lord arrests your spirit and there is a sense of urgency or a sense of danger even that I need to make some adjustments. I need to listen to what God is trying to deal with me about. That is a blessing, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you something. If you've never been convicted, that means God has never dealt with you. If you never have thought about where would I go if I were to die right now, that means God has never dealt with you. That means that you can't even get right with God because you're going to know that you're lost before you can get right. You're going to know that you're on your way to hell before you can be on your way to heaven, right? You're going to know that you're without Jesus. Why? Because, uh, uh, you gotta, because God deals with us in a way that we uh, cannot uh, deal with ourselves. No preacher can do it. No church can do it. It takes the spirit 
of God and a listening ear. Are you with me? It takes the spirit of God and a listening ear. God is trying to get people to listen this morning. God's love is reaching out to people and bringing them to a light that exposes their deeds. Why? Because God knows that you cannot get saved on your own. He knows that you need his help. He knows that he has to put the urgency inside of you. He has to put the conviction inside of you to where you say, God, I'm not going to run from you no more. I'm not going to avoid what I'm feeling. I'm going to listen to you, and I'm coming to you. That's all you can do is listen and come to the Lord. Because you're not in control of the Spirit of God dealing with your heart. So therefore, listen this morning. Listen to the call of God. Listen to God dealing with your heart saying what you need to do this morning, right? The Lord is going to tell us what we need to do to get right with him. God is going to tell us what we need to do to be born again because he knows that you and I cannot do it on our own. The Bible even tells us, it says here, that but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men it is impossible, but not without God. For with God, all things are possible. Yes. yes, you can be saved with God. Yes, you can be born again of the Spirit of God. Yes, you can transform your life from this day forward and be on your way to heaven and, and see Jesus face to face after you pass from this life unto the next life. But we have to do one thing, and that is realize it's going to take God. It's going to take the Spirit of God uh, coming in uh, to our lives. Why? Because we have listened to the call, the yes. gospel call of yes. Jesus. God is calling for people to open up their hearts. He is saying, this is how you get saved. If you know that you're lost, and you know that you're on your way to hell, and God is dealing with you. God has something for you. And he said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart uh, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. He said, you got to call upon Jesus. You got to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, save me. Uh, forgive me of all of my sins. For I cannot become a Christian on my own. I need you on the inside. I invite you on the inside. And Jesus, who is knocking at the door, will come in. He will come in. You can't make Jesus knock at your door, but if he's knocking at your door this morning, he says, open up the door. He says, open up the door, and I will come in and sup with you this morning. He said, I will come in. And if you're having supper with God 24 hours a day, you can't help but to change. That's why he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. You'll begin to talk the way God talked. You'll begin to walk the way God walked. You'll begin to listen to the things that God approves of. You begin to allow thoughts to dominate your heart that God uh, approves of. We won't reject. We won't push away the word of God because something truly happened in our life that the spirit of God is in there, that the God of creation lives in here. God on the inside makes the change. Uh, just like that leaven hidden in the bread that causes the whole to rise up, the whole uh, uh, to begin to, uh, to become transformed. Jesus is the leaven hidden in the heart of the Christian. Man. Jesus is the leaven hidden in my heart that gives me the wherewithal yes. to be able to control my language. Yes. To give me the wherewithal, not to control it, but to get rid of, yes. of those ungodly words, that ungodly talk, and that un and those ungodly eyes. Because the Lord does not cause us to control sin. God calls us to get rid of yes. sin. Yes. Jesus came uh, to save us from our sin, not to control it, what are we doing controlling sin and snuffing it and everything? The Lord wants us to get rid of it. And the only way we can get rid of it is with God. You've got to have God to talk right. You've
You have to have God to walk right. You have to have God to sleep right, to wake up right, to dream right. You got to have God. Amen. Because man cannot change himself. Amen. Jesus right. said you can't even do the least thing. Yeah, he said this is small to God to take his thought. He can add stature to himself. The Lord can make himself tall and the Lord can make himself short. He can sit right in front of you and all of a sudden become seven feet tall. He can be right in front of you and all of a sudden become five feet in height because that is simple for God. But you can't do that. I can't do that, right? But with God's help, but with God's help, we can do all things, brothers and sisters. With God's approval, uh, we can do all things. You can't change. You can't become right with God. You can't be a Christian until the Lord deals with us and say, and we listen. And we'll know what to pray. Yes, Lord. It's funny how we'll know what to pray. You don't even have to follow someone in prayer when God is dealing with you. You will know exactly what you need to say. You will know exactly what you need to say because there's a desperateness that will begin to act. There's a desperateness that will begin to talk. You know what I'm saying? Don't they say desperate? Uh, what, is, what is it they say, sister? Drastic? Drastic something calls for desperate. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Desperate times calls for drastic measures. You know what I'm saying? When we are in, uh, when we are going through something, it's amazing all of a sudden the pressure is on. All of a sudden we know what to do. One man said, life is funny. It holds on to all, to all the answers. Life has a funny way <coughs> of holding on to all the answers when we have a reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And God holds all the answers. When you have a reason, you will know how to pray. You will know how to get a hold of God. You will know how to be saved. Right? We'll be so saved and so knowing God that to the point where we just, people will look at us and say, truly, Jesus is in there, or truly there is something different about you. Have you ever had that happen since you've been saved? Where somebody say there is something different about you. I, I got shot one day. I don't know if I'm just here in Georgia and maybe. I don't know, because people. People do all kinds of stuff. They say strange things, you know. Every Somebody said something about, I can tell you're a preacher. I said, really? I ain't know how to take it. Because <laughs> I sure know what trying to show it. But if you talk or if you're around me long enough and you didn't know me, you'll know something different about me at the least. You will, because I'm going to do some strange stuff. I ain't talking about weird stuff. I don't have to make a frown and go, ah, start speaking in tongues in front of everybody and to, to let everybody know. But you're going to notice, man, he doesn't, he doesn't curse. Man, he, he's, he, he, he's not looking all around, looking at the women, man. He don't even hardly listen to music. Little simple things which will cause a person to begin to question. And you don't do it for the sake of trying to get people to question. Right. You do it because somebody is hidden in your heart. Then David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And let me tell you something. When Jesus is hidden in someone's heart, they don't have to sit here and parade anything. Right. They don't sit, have to sit here and blow the trumpet. <laughs> I am saved, or they don't even have to say, I have the gift of. They don't have to say, I got the gift of anything. <laughs> you know what? When you really get saved, you don't even care about no gift, especially when you got the Holy Ghost, because there is an awareness that's different from religious people. You know that the Holy Spirit holds all the gifts, yes. and all I got to do is pray. Amen. It don't matter what gift, the gift I need is the one that I need right now. I ain't studying. I don't need the gift of healing if, uh, if, if I don't need healing. You know what I'm saying? Some things you don't worry about. 
I'm gonna tell you how awesome God is. When you get saved, I know me, I know how I, how I got saved. I didn't even care about other religions. That, that stuff was like Santa Claus to me. It's like studying about Christmas. I ain't gonna study about Christmas and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy. To me, it's vain when you got God. Why in the world? You know what I'm saying? You can study about that stuff, but really, in my view, when God came in me, I'm talking about when God came, I ain't had a reason to study about Buddha. I said it ain't too. This big old fat Chinese looking dude, I don't have a reason to study about him. When I got God, because they, they claim they have God, but when you find the real God and you see the fake and the phony, you don't care about all that stuff. That's right. It's like studying to find out about St. Nicholas. Let's see what St. Nicholas and his elves did. And we're going to study about the elves and we're going to study about the reindeer. We're going to study about Rudolph and Blitzen and Comet and Cupid, which does nothing. And you can't talk like this until you are, until, until we listen to God. You can't even, and it's offensive to people who don't know God when you talk like this. They get offended because they supposed to get offended. All right. Even the prophet Phyllis, my man named Elisha, he laughed. I don't know how long, I don't know how much Elisha studied about Baal, but I doubt it. He probably didn't even study about Baal because he's too busy studying God. Elisha on that mountain, and the 400 prophets of Baal, if I got the song right, 400 prophets of Baal, something like that. These suckers, the Baal people, they sitting up there, do y'all study about Baal? That's a religion. What's the difference between Baal and Buddha? So old Baal, saying, old Baal, you know, the prophets of Baal, Elijah was literally on the mountain. As these people were cutting themselves and doing all this stuff, he was literally picking on them. He said, where is your God? Has he gone on a vacation? And he started laughing. He literally started just belly rolling. And, and no doubt, these were Israelites. And, and he's going, how in the world did these suckers worship Baal? And they got these prophets, literal prophets of Baal that was straight up out of order. It was, it was out of order. And he laughed at Baal. And who studies Baal in here? Who studies Ashtaroth, right? Because we know they're fake because the Bible lines it out. And just the same with Confucius and Confucian and all these other religions. Because they don't deal with your heart. But isn't it awfully funny how that when we hear true gospel message, we get convicted. But when we go to their places, we don't get convicted. When we hear the light, we feel guilty. But when we go to the Hindus, we don't feel guilty. When we go to a gospel church, we feel arrested. But when we go to their places, we don't feel arrested because there is no light to run from. There is no light to run from. So that tells you how real God is because your conscience bears witness that there is a God somewhere. And there is something about that name, Jesus. Is this all right? Yes. Am I making y'all good and bad? But I guarantee you, if somebody online is mad, light is exposing you. Oh, hallelujah. You stick, you can be mad all you want, man. And you can be glad all you want, too. Great message. But you're still convicted. And the thing what the mad person need to do and the glad person need to do is listen to the call, yes. the gospel call of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And let glad and mad, because you got some people that are cheerfully listen to this. 
And you got some people who ain't really listening to this. But both need to come to Jesus yes. at the end of the day. Is this all right? Yes. Is this real talk? <coughs> I told you, Lord, I'm going to talk to you. So don't worry about it. Oh, I'm trying to find Jesus. You don't found him. And I said, done. You done found him. You done running and looking. The Lord is saying he is here. Jesus is saying that he is called. He's not calling us to a church or to sign our name on the road, but he's calling us to true repentance. He's calling us to say, God, I can't even stop drinking. I can't even stop doping. I can't even stop a lot of things. I can't even add stature to my height. I can't even take none away. I can't even stop myself from getting older. I can't even retain my spirit. I can't control the lightning. I can't control the rain. I can't even stop money from coming. But God, if you help me, yes. if you help me, because you're trying to help me, and I can feel you trying to help yes. me, if you could, if, I just want you to just come into my life yes. and influence me like you never have before. Yes. To live for you, to walk with you, to pray to you, to read my Bible, to trust you, to understand. That being said, we're going to bow our heads in reverence to God. And now this message is in your hand. This message is in your hand this morning. I told you the Lord was going to speak to you. I told you he was going to deal with you. And he is. And he cares. Goodness gracious, would you listen to the call? Yes. Will you listen to the call? Well, Pastor, what do I need to do? I want you to tell Jesus, Jesus, you're not going to let the door come into my life. And I mean it. Tell him I mean it. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want to start something good. And believe he's in there when you call upon <clears throat> Believe he's in there when you call upon Lord, I want you to come into my life. And I want you to stay in my life. Day forward, I commit myself to you as one that's been married. I commit myself to you, God. I marry you, Jesus. I marry you, Father. I marry you, Holy Spirit. I have come to you. Will you do that? I've shown you how to do it. Will you confess it? That's all you gotta do. Follow the instruction. Follow the lead. I will see you. You can't be too embarrassed. You can't be too embarrassed. Talk to him in your own words. Hallelujah. We love you. I feel like I'm led to lead them in prayer. I don't think they heard me. Play softly. If you need this, I'll lead you in prayer.
given your heart to Christ today, keep walking with him. And let me tell you, I want to share something else with us. I remember, y'all know I have a lawn service and you learn some things and, it's, and, and, and I want to show you something that God dealt with me. I remember putting this uh, plant, this hydrangea plant inside of the ground and uh, and what was happening is, you know, we were watering it, but we weren't watering it enough, watering it enough. And so it, it was, it began to kind of droop like it was dying. And I told the people, I said, listen, I don't care how much you water this thing, you need to water it until it takes root. And listen, y'all, let me tell you something about starting off in God. You got to water that salvation until that thing takes roots, uh, take root, and it has to get deep roots in you. Yes. It cannot be a shallow plant. God has planted that thing inside of you, and, and it has to take root, and it has to get deeply rooted in us the same way that the garbage of the world and our bad habits and our sinful ways were right. deeply rooted in us prior to coming to God. And so that is the key. If you get this thing deeply rooted, you keep watering it through prayer and keeping your inspiration up and keeping yourself uh, in front of God consistently, you will never be the same again and you will change for the better. And God needs people to go out there and be able to grow old with him so that they can tell us more effectively Faith to faith to faith to faith, telling others, influencing them about the Lord till the day they die. Amen. All right. I thank God for Miss Mister. Uh, he's gone. He's passed on. But uh, what's his name, Mister? Uh, good Lord. Mm, used to walk the neighborhood over the white man. Mister Jack. Mister Jack grew old with the Lord, and he gave us a word of a word of advice on how to raise our family. See, people need you to serve God. I'm about to get out of here. He gave us a word of advice. He would always slip notes in our car and stuff. He'll find a door open, he'll slip a note in there about Jesus. And he said this, because we didn't know what to do with the guy and, and, and everything. I mean, we were following God or whatever, but but uh, we God dealt with us through him, a man who grew old with the Lord. Yes. God had deep roots in him. Now, yes. he, now he's enjoying heaven right now. And he said this. Everything you do. He said, don't let your child go out alone. If they go on a date, everybody going on a date. <laughs> if you, everything you do, you do it together. You do everything together. Do everything yes. together. He said. And look, we did everything together. Everything. And, and, and I can't even get the dude out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get him out. You know what I'm saying? He stuck with us like who? I'm on my way. Huh? I'm on my way. Yeah, you're definitely on your way. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about not being on your way because you are. You definitely on your way. I ain't let no full grown man because there's only one sheriff in the house. And he started looking at me in that man and I'm like, oh, I'm only going to play that, right? I'm only going to play that. He ain't going to play that. One sheriff. Yeah, man. You remind me of me. But anyway, it's not about that, bro. <laughs> Besides all that, bro, God, the thing is, grow old with the Lord. Let it get deeply rooted in you. And you will never have to keep starting over now, okay? You can do this. You got this. May God bless you real good, okay? Let us go ahead and dismiss in prayer. Let us stand to our feet. Let us stand to our feet. My thank you. We'll have Sister Constance dismiss the church. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you first and foremost for the feet that bring the good news to the living Lord. Lord Jesus, I ask that you touch each and every person, God, that is pining after you this morning, Lord God. Lord, I ask you that you fill them with the precious Holy Spirit, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, that we may walk uprightly before you, Lord Jesus, Lord God. I thank you, God. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you for Brother Calvin this morning, Lord God. Lord Jesus, for this is your soul, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing the souls of men and women into New Testament, Lord. But most of all, into your kingdom, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the, those that are on the sick bed this morning. God, you are calling them to get up off that sick bed, Lord God. But Lord, they are already healed by your stripes, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the souls of men and women, God. And Lord, I thank you most of all for your word, what you have done on the cross, Lord God.
present time, God, of what you will be doing in the future. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, show yourself friendly. God bless you, for God bless you, Brother Calvin. God bless all of you. Again, a shout out to Joshua Caleb. How old are you, man? How old is Josh? Nine. Nine. Happy night. God bless you, Sister Linda. Jason, God bless. And it's been good. May God bless you.